Hi there. Welcome back to Mill Creek Church, the place where you belong. We are so thankful that you came out and chose to worship with us. We're currently doing our Wednesday night word of encouragement. If you'd like to find out more information about Mill Creek Church, you can visit us on the web at millcreekbaptist.online or join our Facebook group that you will see displayed on the screen. And if you would like to know more about Mill Creek Church, please feel free to fill out our Connect Plus card that will be linked in the description below, and someone from our church will be reaching out to you shortly. Today's reading comes from Isaiah chapter 9, verses 2-6. through six. The people who walk in darkness will see a great light. Those who live in a dark land, the light will shine on them. You shall multiply the nation. You shall increase their gladness. They will be glad in your presence as with the gladness of harvest, as men rejoice when they divide the spoil. For you shall break the yoke of their burden and the staff on their shoulder, the rod of their oppressor, as at the battle of Midian. For every boot of the booted warrior in the battle tumult and cloak rolled in blood will be for burning, fuel for the fire. For a child will be born to us, a son will be given to us, and the government will rest on his shoulders, and his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Eternal Father, Prince of Peace. Jesus is the Prince of Peace. Today, when we hear the word Prince, we typically think second in command. In other words, you have the king who is in charge, and then the prince would be the successor to the throne. But it would be incorrect to read that modern understanding back into the Bible. In fact, the biblical term is often translated as captain, chief, commander, leader, and in this passage of Isaiah as Prince. So the most critical observation is that this name given to Jesus means second to none. He's the chief leader. Furthermore, Isaiah uses this term consistently in other passages to insist that the leader bearing this title will do something unexpected, or in the case of Jesus, turn the world system upside down. Hence the translation as prince instead of as captain or leader. So the ruler bearing this name will reign in a way that's unexpected and perhaps even surprising for those who do not know what to look for and even for those that think they do. But the primary distinguishing factor of this man's rule is that it will be one characterized as peaceful, for he shall be called Prince of Peace. And this word for peace is God's peace. It is the peace of God that comes from having peace with God. But most of our examples in history do not ascend to power peacefully. Nebuchadnezzar, Attila the Hun, Adolf Hitler, and Mary Tudor or Bloody Mary, for example. This ruler, unlike the rest, comes bearing the peace of God and giving it to any and all would accept him as their king. In fact, This was one of the reasons the scribes and Pharisees missed the Messiah when he came in the Incarnation. He came as a babe wrapped in swaddling cloths in a lowly manger, not with swords and armor ready for war as they expected. So to be the Prince of Peace, Jesus would need to demonstrate the characteristics of one, supreme authority as a leader, as well as, number two, meekness and humility as the full embodiment of the God of peace, since to have the peace of God, it must come from the God of peace. And the wonder in this name is that although Jesus did fulfill it in his time on the earth 2,000 years ago, there is coming a day when he will most fully demonstrate his godly authority and peaceful reign as he establishes the millennial kingdom and afterwards reigns forevermore. He shall be called Prince of Peace, the one who removes all peace-disturbing factors and secures the peace for all eternity. What a marvelous thought. As we celebrate Christmas this year and every year, may we do so knowing that God in Christ is the wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, everlasting Father, and Prince of Peace. He is the most perfect revelation of God to those of us in the flesh, and it is this time of the year where we celebrate His first coming to us and look forward to the hastening of His second coming. 
May you and yours be blessed this Christmas season. May you experience the peace of God with your families as you seek to worship Christ, the incarnate Word of God, on this most holy day. Merry, Merry Christmas from all of us at Mill Creek Church right to your home.